Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to go through a chicken thigh, how I would trim it up for a competition. Today though, we're doing backyard style, so I'm going to leave as much meat on the chicken as possible. We all point out what we normally do during our, our competitions, how we trim it and everything like that. So what I'll do to remove the skin is you just kind of want to stretch it out. Kind of see all the skin on there and we'll trim down the skin a little bit as well. And there's normally a seam in here if you can find it right there. And that's just a tug of war game. You just tug it right off. So right here we have just all the meat, we have the bone back here. Normally in a competition, I would try and square this up as much as possible. But since we're just doing a backyard cook, I'm just gonna take off the fat and leave as much meat on there as possible because I like to eat more. But again, in a competition, I take off this little nugget, I take off, I'd square it up so that it's nice and pretty. Today, we're just taking off the white stuff, leaving all the meat. There's this little flap here. We'll try and take off as much as that as possible. And then we'll flip over. Um, also during competition, you can kind of see when these cook, it shrinks the meat a little bit. The bone will stick out. I would normally knock off both of these with some kitchen shears. I'm not worried about it. My family doesn't care what it looks like, so we'll just trim off the white. That's not going to cook out. Just throw it away. Sometimes there's a vein that's left back here. You don't want to chew on that while you're eating chicken. Okay, and we'll call that good. Normally I would just look at these knuckles, make sure there's no bone sticking out. I trim those off. And yeah, that's kind of the basics. It's an easy trim. It's really quick as far as the meat. So we're going to set that off to the side and then we're going to focus on the skin now. So the skin is the trickiest part of doing thighs. So as you can see there's a ton of fat on here and that's going to make it so that the skin isn't bite through. It's not going to render out. So I don't know if you can see all of that in there but there's tons of skin. And I found as far as knives to trim that skin, I don't like using my barbecue knife is not as flexible. I actually found this knife in my wife's knife block. That's pretty flexible. It's just kind of like a fillet knife. I'm just going to take it. Um, most times you can cut all this. I like to leave as much skin on there as possible for right now because I tend to cut holes in there. So I'm just going to kind of trim it off. I'm using a smaller cutting board today too because a lot easier if I can move the cutting board so I kind of fan out the skin and then move my cutting board around more than the skin around. So we're just going to shave off as much as possible. And this is the part that you really want to focus on. So this is the main part of the skin. Let's kind of shave that off there. And again, this makes it so when you go take a bite of that chicken, you can bite right through that skin and it doesn't pull off and ruin the meat. Because that's the worst part of chicken thighs. You bite through, you take all the skin with you, and then you have a bunch of skinless meat after that. So you can see all of this fat coming off. It's kind of a weird concept, but it makes the chicken amazing. I found the more flexible your knife, the better off you're going to be. So look at all that fat that comes off. You wouldn't think about that much fat on a chicken thigh. And then you have this skin that's kind of just paper thin. And we'll season this skin. So while the meat's brining, I normally just set the skin in the uh, fridge on a plate and just let it hang out till I'm done brining. And then I'll combine the meat back with the skin um, after the meat's done brining. So for brining, I would go at least two hours. Most times I brine overnight. Um, so all these have been brining overnight. 
you just want to pick off all the gross stuff off of them. Um, sometimes there'll be some excess salt on there, some loose skin. So brine overnight, um, if you can, obviously, if you can't, if you're doing it that same day, I'd go at least two hours. Before I throw some seasoning on them, I like to just make sure they're padded dry. So I'll go through and just kind of get some liquid off of them. Because I'm just going to season them up right here. Make sure I get all the liquid off the bottom of them. Turn them all over. The reason why I'm cleaning up the liquid off of the cutting board too is because I'll season both sides. And I don't want that seasoning to come off because the cutting board's wet. So let's talk seasoning. I have found the most success if I use a spicy rub on the meat and then once I put the skin back on, sorry I'm just trimming off a bone here, once I put the meat back on I go with the more savory kind of sweet barbecue rub, an all-purpose barbecue rub. So what I have found has worked is these two combos. So I have Yardbird by Plowboys, and then I make my own Chipotle rub. So what we'll do is we'll do a Chipotle rub on the base because it's really spicy. And they'll kind of tone it down because we're doing it just on the meat, and we're gonna go pretty heavy with these two rubs as well. So on the meat, I'm gonna do Chipotle. Once I get the skin back on, I'm gonna hit it with an all-purpose barbecue rub. Um, I like the Yardbird by Plowboys. Yeah, we'll put a link in the description to that, uh, to that seasoning. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go pretty heavy on this stuff. In competition, I like this combination because you want that just to remember. If they can't taste the chicken after yours, that's a success. Obviously you don't want to heat them out too much, but you want them to remember your flavors. And I found this is a good combination, chipotle and then a good barbecue rub. So we'll let that sit. It'll start to uh, moisten up a little bit. That salt, that chipotle will work its way into the meat and then we'll season the other side. So once we kind of see these moisture pockets kind of pooling up, once we can tell that that rub is set in, again, don't rub your meat, just pat it in. We're gonna flip it over, season the other side. Same way, we're gonna be pretty liberal with the seasoning. Because we want that judge to take one bite of it, remember us. That's all they're gonna take is one bite, so you wanna want make sure you have seasoning in every spot on this chicken. And same thing at home, I want a good seasoned piece of meat, so. Okay, so this point we're gonna put the chicken or the skin back on the chicken. And Rachel's handing me some butter, thanks babe. So we're gonna put the skin back on the chicken. This is kind of a weird process because you're putting, I don't match up the skin with the right chicken, so it's kind of like they're wearing somebody else's costume to a party. But what you wanna do is just kind of judge size of the, the skin based off of the chicken. So I'll probably just trim off this side, put it in a pile, and then take this. It's okay if you get some of that chipotle seasoning on it. And just kind of judge, yeah, it'll fit on that one. And then we're gonna tuck it under. Make sure we're covering all that top meat. And just try and square it up as much as possible and make sure that it will stay. There's not really a good process to do it, but you wanna tuck that skin under as much as possible and then set it in your pan. So however you set it in the pan is how it's going to cook. So that one's probably going to square up quite a bit. It's going to look pretty. It'll have that skin right on top of it. And then you move on to your next one. Pick up a piece of skin, stretch it out again, 
pick out which piece of chicken you're going for and then you can trim it up a little bit. That's why I like to trim as much as I can because sometimes you get towards the end and you're like, oh crap, I have a big piece of chicken but a small piece of skin. So you just kind of judge which one you want to go for, lay it on top, tuck that skin under, cover up all that meat, and then we're gonna set it in the pan again. You didn't make it under, that's fine. You can always tuck it in and just kind of square it up. And it's just a fun process over and over. And over. Probably trim off. That's another thing is if you notice that you're a little too big, you can always put it off the side of your cutting board and trim it. Throw it on there. And then before I take off these gloves, what I'm gonna do is just make sure that I look all right in the pan. You might be overlaid a little bit, but that's fine. Just so make sure you have all the skin tucked underneath those chicken thighs. You kinda want them to be in a straight lines. Because how they go in here is how they're gonna cook. And I'm going to take off these gloves because they have chicken all over them. Grab my yard bird. And lay a good seasoning of that on here. A lot of seasoning because you want them to take a piece and just know what you're all about. So cooking, I like to go 225 for an hour uncovered. So that first hour, I'm gonna put just pieces of butter on here. Your mom probably basted it with butter when she cooked the Thanksgiving turkey. We kind of do the same thing with these. We don't wanna pack as much moisture in there as possible, so we're putting butter on top. And that'll just kind of melt down into those skins, make it amazing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cook for an hour uncovered at 225 on my Traeger. Um, after an hour, we're going to leave it at 225. We're going to wrap these up and we're going to let those skins just kind of poach in that butter and all of the liquids that they're dropping off. And then after that hour, we're going to come in, we're going to sauce them and then put them back on the trigger for about half an hour in that sauce and just let that sauce tack up, get a lot of smoke into it. Um, and we'll talk about saucing next. Okay, so for our sauce, the good mixture that I found is this Blue Hogs Original Barbecue Sauce. Again, you can pick this up at Sportsman's Warehouse, probably IFA. Also, I got it out here at Ridley's in Hiram. And then I also like to use the Traeger apricot sauce. Um, gives it a good fruit flavor. I love the taste of apricot on um, chicken thighs as well. Give it a try. This one I picked up at Sportsman's Warehouse. What I like to do as well is I will warm up my sauce before I dunk my chicken into it. That way when I dunk it, it will run off. All the excess will run off. Um, so it's not all sticky, it's not all gloopy. So I'll combine this and then we'll get to warming it up and then dunking chicken in it. This Blue Hogs is a little thicker so we might have to grab a spoon for it but it should run out a little bit. This one has quite a bit of molasses in it so it really sticks on so we want to make sure and heat it up. We'll probably go equal parts Blue Hog, equal parts Traeger. And we'll grab our whisk or our spoon and just start warming it up back behind me. Some people warm it up on the Traeger. I didn't have much room left on there, so I'm just gonna warm it up here in the kitchen. Wait, we just pull them off after we're the two hours, and now we're gonna sauce them and go put them back on. So like I said, how they kind of shrink up and everything like that. So how we're gonna sauce them, we're gonna just pick them up out of here Shake off any of that excess liquid, and then just dunk straight into the sauce. Make sure we cover every little bit of that chicken. And then 
go directly onto the grate. Make sure that skin stays smooth. We'll go on to the next one. This one has feather, feathers on it still. That's fine. Dunk. Get rid of any of the excess. Go on to the grate. At this point, you want to touch them as least as possible. That way, that sauce kind of just glasses over. It's nice and pretty for presentation. A little tip that I like to do. I want people to bite in this and get a punch of flavor. So what I like to do is come with that yard bird and just kind of sprinkle a little bit on top. I'm gonna move this out of the way. You want to be careful about this because you don't want to get like sugar glops, glops and stuff like that on there. But we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of seasoning at the end so that we bite into that and get as much flavor as possible. We're being really careful because we don't want to get too much Okay, so what we're gonna do now is grate directly down onto the grill, let them go for half an hour so that sauce tacks up, um, and then we'll pull them off and they're ready to go. So we're going out onto the grill, We've got some other ones on right now too. Pick up the grate, be super careful so you don't drop any. We're just going directly down on there, don't burn yourself. Don't let them go for half an hour. Let's see how we did with the skin. The bite, let me find the one I want. I want a small one. Nice and juicy. Get that chipotle kick. That sauce is amazing. We can see. Clean bite through. Nice and moist. Perfect. Oh. It's freaking good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>